Hi everyone, this is Sunday with Farmers Business Network, and I'm here today with the CFO of Farmers Business Network, Maria Olaide, and I want to ask a few questions to you, um, especially because we are currently in Hispanic Heritage Month and you have a great story to share. So uh, let's start out. Maria, can you share a little bit about your own journey into agriculture? Sure, uh, be happy to Sunday. Uh, I was born in a small, small farming village in Mexico where I spent the first five years of my life. And everyone there had their own small parcel of land that families worked to support their families. And I had a very happy childhood there. I grew up with a very large extended family and my job was to uh, play and stay out of trouble basically. So uh, when I was five, my parents immigrated to a town called Ceres in Central Valley of California in a search for a better life for our family. Um, they worked as farm workers all their working lives in, in California. And in fact, my mother uh, in the summers would take me and all my siblings to help harvest fruits, various uh, fruits, mostly boysenberries uh, every summer. And uh, we did that from the time I was about 10 years old to about 15 years old. So we would get up at the crack of dawn and go to work until it got too hot to continue working. So my mother used to say that she liked to, to do that because it kept us busy in the mornings, would, we would sleep all afternoon, go play at night, and uh, it really was a way for her to manage five kids during the <laughs> summer breaks. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, so you know, I think that experience also taught to us work ethic and is one of the things that inspired me to do well in school and pursue a higher education. So working on, on farms is very important contribution to society um, and honorable work, but to me at the time, not having to work in the scorching sun for the rest of my life was pretty motivating. Gotcha. That is an incredibly close journey with agriculture. Just yes. actually kind of growing up on a farm in that way and uh, seeing that like seasonal work happen and everything. So uh, that's that's a wild story. I feel like I feel like most kids cannot share how close that is to you know yeah. all that. So uh, so how did that all lead to Farmers Business Network? How how did you get here today from um, from there? Yeah, about five years ago, after being mostly in larger companies, uh, mostly in the Bay Area, I had decided that I wanted to be a CFO at a startup. So I got a call from a recruiter uh, about the CFO role here at FBN. And at the time, AgTech was not really a thing. I mean, AgTech has just been uh, really emerging in recent years, but back then it was fairly new. But it was really my roots in agriculture that piqued my interest to even just take the call. Um, so, you know, after a few meetings with the FBN leadership, I was honestly shocked to learn that there was an entire industry that had yet to be disrupted by technology. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh my God, what an opportunity. So it was really the connection to the mission at FBN the overall opportunity I perceived existed and the caliber of the leadership team, which by the way is fundamentally the same today as it was five years ago, that uh, made me decide to really come and spend the rest of the next few years of my career at FBN. Uh, and here five years later, I couldn't have been uh, happier with my decision. Awesome. That's so great. Yeah. And I also can speak to how wonderful the leadership team is. Love them. <laughs> they're, they're awesome to work with. Yeah. Um, so, so where would you like to see ag sort of move in the future? FBN is a really forward thinking company and a really future minded company. So what, what would that look like for you and, and where would you like that to head? As an agricultural industry, Sunday, we need to find a solution to, to feed the growing global population with the same arable land, because land is not necessarily growing in a sustainable manner. And the only way we're gonna do that is through innovation. So I happen to think and, uh, and know really that farmers are the stewards of the land. So it's gonna really be up to the farmers to decide which innovations they're going to adopt. Uh, I do believe that the future of ag will be more data and tech enabled and farmers will be more connected as well among each other, um, locally and not locally, and have more information and insights than ever before to make uh, to be able to make these really important decisions. Um, so clearly this is what FBM provides to our community of farmers. So I look forward to a future where these types of innovations will help us meet 
the challenges that, uh, that we as a global population face today, which are providing food security for a growing population, transitioning to a more sustainable uh, agriculture and responding to climate change. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. And a really solid answer to just sort of taking into account where we're headed and all that good stuff. So yeah. um, awesome. And sort of changing gears a little bit and uh, on a more timely subject, we're wrapping up Hispanic Heritage Month, and that represents more than 60 million Latinos in the United States and a lot of people working in agriculture. So for people who are watching right now and, uh, you know, sort of maybe watching in the future, what's a great way to have them contribute to this awareness and support the community? Yeah, you know, in the US, Hispanics make up around 3% of agricultural producers and around 50% of hired farm workers, of which I've explained to me and my family were, were part of. So the contribution of Hispanics to US agriculture is well known. Um, I do believe that the contributions of farm workers specifically are underappreciated and undersupported. Uh, so viewers can support immigration related issues related to farm workers, uh, and they can also support their unique childcare and educational needs. You know, as oftentimes the work hours and the migratory nature of their work require specialized childcare and education, educational accommodations. So I urge you know, all listeners to be supportive and appreciative of the important contributions Hispanic make to farming. Yep, that's a perfect answer. This, that's been really helpful. And I agree, um, childcare is such a big issue as well, just sort of calling out that specifically. Um, it's so tricky with sort of the normal, what is considered the normal working of business hours and then what actually has to be done. So those are two very different things, but um, I really appreciate your answer. I think it's super thoughtful and um, and I really appreciate you sitting down with me. I think uh, Farmers Business Network has a great future ahead of it, but also you're doing a wonderful job. So um, <laughs> I appreciate it and, and thank you so much. Thank you, Sunday.